Hey, we're back once again for another C++ lesson. It's just myself and my son, Alex. How's it going, Alex? Hello. And today we're going to take things up a notch with lesson one of our C++ tutorial series. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And if you have any questions or comments while we're going through our lesson, please feel free to interrupt and uh, ask away or to comment. So today we're going to cover floats and strings. We're going to talk about basic math operators that you can use, uh, plus, minus, multiply, divide, and modulus or the modulo operator. And I'm going to give you a very basic introduction to functions. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at our program that we had from last time. And as you can see, we left off where we were talking about being able to declare a variable. Uh, and we started off making this variable that we called an int. And what's, what's an int again, Alex? Uh, an integer, a whole number. Yeah, so an integer is a whole number. And as we know, if we want to do a uh, any sort of program that it's likely that all of our that some of our numbers probably won't be whole numbers. We might want to use fractions, right? And, exactly. Yeah. And so we have a couple different ways that we can declare uh, decimal numbers or fractions. And one of them is with what, Alex? What can we use to declare a decimal number? Uh, float. Yeah. So a float. So so we could use this uh, primitive type called float, and we'll just call this float d. So we declare it in the same way that we would declare an integer. And what we can do is we can make this a decimal number. So it could be a whole number. So we could make it five, or we could make it five point four three, and that will be fine. We won't be able to do that with an integer. So if we so if we go to int b here and we said b equals 5.43, let's see if this compiles for us. So this is one of the interesting things about C++ is that it will actually compile for us. But what we will see is that if we go to our console out, we see that we see that it it uh, it built. It built for us, right? But when we console out B, what do you think? What do you think we're going to end up with, Alex? It's just going to take the whole number. I don't even think it's rounding. It's just going to take the whole number. Yeah, exactly. So we can see, and I'm just going to pull this up here, that it is it is actually cut off the 0. 0.43 and just given us back five. So if we were in a uh, you know, some sort of application and that, and that we declared an int B equals 5.43 and we expected it to be 5.43, we would go, we would be going through our whole application and we wouldn't even be aware that it has cut that decimal, that, that fraction part off of our, uh, off of our number. <clears throat> and this is one of the stickier parts of C++ is that sometimes you have things like this that happen that uh, it won't actually tell you. And uh, next thing you know, you have a wrong number, you have something that's incorrect and you're not sure why. So we need to make sure that that's a float. And then what we'll do is we will just console that out. And now we should end up with the right number. So we see here that we've ended up with 5.43. So we also have another type of decimal number that we can declare. I mean, there are actually loads uh, that, that we could talk about. There's one that's another common one called a double uh, that is uh, is large. It, we would declare it like this, double C. And this actually has uh, a lot more precision. And it doesn't actually, uh, we looked at this earlier, it doesn't actually print this out to the console uh, the, the the precision but th when you're adding or uh, doing something with doubles together you actually have about 15 digits of precision uh, in a double as opposed to a float which has 
uh, depending on, I guess, your computer architecture, I think it has about seven points of precision around it. But double is another thing that you'll see, kind of similar to a float, except it has a lot more precision than a float. Any questions so far? Mm, so I guess the first question would be, what's the value of even having a precise uh, type of number? So it, what I'm saying is, why not just make every number a double since it doesn't really matter mm. in a sense? Yeah, so that's a great question. And one of the, I guess one of the reasons is because under the hood, these uh, these these primitives, they take up a, uh, a set amount of space on your uh, in your computer. So the more precision that you have, you have double uh, with int. You have uh, you can do like long. They have these these other primitives called longs, long long, uh, and so on. There there are loads of them. Uh, you have unsigned ints and so on. And the reason that you wouldn't declare everything as a double is because of space. Because you're trying to minimize the amount of space that you're. Uh, taking up. And also because uh, another reason is that because if you're dealing with something that is, you know, is going to be an integer, you wouldn't want that to have the potential to have a decimal, mm. uh, a, a decimal or a fractionary number inside of it. You'd want that to strictly be an int. Mm, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So I'm sure that there are other great reasons that I could probably name right now for, for wanting to, wanting it to be that way, wanting to stay with the lowest, uh, the lowest precision that you can. But uh, a, a, another thing is that some people use C++ for embedded devices. So like if you're putting, uh, if you're putting an application on a chip, on an embedded chip, uh, mm -hmm. you want to, you, you have to preserve as much space as possible. So you want to make your you want to make your application as small as possible. So when you're like downloading, when you're downloading an app or you're downloading a plugin, you want that you don't want that to be to have a whole bunch of space that's not being used for right. you know any sort of reason. So another thing that we could talk about here while we're talking about numbers is we could talk about uh, things that we could do with different numbers together, right? So. Mm. We have these math operators, uh, and I'll introduce you to these. So for now, we will use the same the same data types uh, to add together, just so I can focus you around the actual math operation rather than the uh, rather than you know uh, the the type that I'm actually adding together. So let's say that we want to add two numbers together, right? So what we could do is we can actually create another variable. Let's call this int c. And what I could do is I could say int c equals a plus b, right? And then what we could do is we could just console that out. And we will see that the value is now seven. So that's how we hmm. use addition. Okay. Any questions about that? Yeah. So uh, this is kind of going a little ahead, but what happens? Uh, so the C++ program reads it from top to bottom, right? Yeah. So in the context of math, does it also read it left to right or is, does it have an order of operations? Yes. So, so this is getting a little bit ahead, but you know about, if you know basic math, basic algebra, then you know about order of operations, right? Which would be, so let's say that we say an int C equals 10. And let's see here. So if I say, uh, we'll bring in our next, <laughs> I guess it's a good time to bring in our next math operator. We will talk about the multiply operator, which is this star. And we will say a plus b times c, then what, and we will make this d, sorry. Then what, what do you think the answer will be here? 
So, uh, so, so what's, it should be so what's B gonna times C first yeah. plus A. So it'd be 52. That's, that's right. Think. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, so yeah, like you were saying, order of operations is important. So if you know basic algebra, then you know that multiplication and division happen before addition and subtraction unless there's parentheses. So if I do this, a plus B times C, then what will happen, Alex? It'll take A plus B and then times it by C. That's so in right. this case, it'll be 70. Yeah, exactly. So so that's so that's what we that's what we have here is the order of operations and what is in parentheses and what is not in parentheses is very, very, very important. Okay, so we see we got 70 with when we have the parentheses there. And here we have 52. So we have 10 times 5, which is 50, plus uh, 2, which is 52. So that's, so that's what we have. So we also have the subtraction operator, right? So we have A minus B. Right, so it's just the dash, that's the subtraction operator. And what I could do is I could just console that out. And notice also while I'm while I'm on it, you notice how I get rid of all the extra space. So we don't want and this is just something to get into a good habit early on. So we don't want something like this where you have you know, a couple of declarations that are happening at the top, and then you have a whole bunch of space, and then down here at the bottom you have a, another line of code. Uh, mm -hmm. So just keep everything nice and tidy, okay? Just, you know, one, you know, there are different conventions for things, but typically one line, have one line that separates out, uh, you know, so we have declarations here, then we have a space because that's like a space of work that's mm -hmm. finished, and then we, and then, we are counseling something out. So, so now uh, we will say, uh, yeah, so we had that D value that I erased earlier. So I'm just going back. <laughs> uh, here we go. So we go D equals A minus B. And we see that we get a negative value back here, negative three, because two minus five gives us negative three. Right, so we could also do division. Okay, so uh, so there's a issue here, though. What what do you think our issue would be with this division here, Alex? Uh, I assume it's either not going to compile or it's not going to give you the full answer. So exactly. Yeah, I, in this case, it would be uh, point. I don't know what that'd be about 0.5, like 0.4. Mm. So, but I don't even know if it would print out any number except zero. Yeah. So, so why is that? Because what? it's an integer. So it doesn't, it doesn't include the decimals. Yeah. So you'll see that, that math in, in C++ can be a little bit funny. So it's very important to understand one of the most important things to understand when you're doing any sort of math in C++ is what type of output that you're looking for and what type of things that you're putting in. So let's, so let's try, let's try this, right? So we have two integers and now let's say float D equals A divided by B. What do you think will happen now, Alex? It'll give you 0.4 or 0 0.4. Okay, let's let's take a look. Okay, still gives you oh. zero. So, hmm. any ideas why that might be? I guess because you're using integers to get a float. Exactly. So, uh, so your so hmm. your primitives can't go up in precision. They can only go down in precision. So I could take a float and make it an int, but I can't take an int. And I mean, it, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's, but that's essentially the reason why. So if I do this, 
if I say float, the rules can be a little bit complex and I don't want to confuse you. Uh, and they confuse me all the time. Uh, so by the way, so, uh, so two divided by five and now we should have 0 0.4, 0.4. And we see that we have that here, right? So when you're, when you're looking for a decimal number, you want to have your, your inputs be, uh, be floats or doubles or fractional and you want your to make sure that your output is also declared as a something that can hold that precision okay you can also do this so let's see what happens here right so we have an integer that's a a float that's b and then we want a float output and let's see what happens here so we see that that here we have the right output again, 0.4. Okay, so hmm. so especially with math, like I said, it could be a little bit it could be a little bit tricky to uh, actually. Um, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you have a good understanding of what your inputs are and what you're expecting to be your output. Okay. Okay. So, any questions about that? Uh, this is a pretty niche case, but what happens if you uh, did something impossible, like divided by zero? Okay, so you bring up a great rule. So there's a great rule in computing, which is that you cannot divide by zero, right? And let's see what happens if we, oh, interesting. Yeah, so we see that we get this inf, uh, infinite, or it's actually what we call undefined behavior. Undefined behavior means... We don't know what's going to happen if we divide this by zero. But there's a rule in computing that, and I'm actually surprised that this, uh, that this actually compiled, which is that you're not supposed to divide by zero. See, division by zero is undefined. Mm -hmm. But notice when I put 0, 0.0 that it didn't, it didn't give me a mm -hmm. warning there, which is interesting. Once again, C++ has some kind of quirks like that, okay, but... Uh, but dividing by zero is undefined and C will, it'll still build though. Uh, and then, but then it gives us, it gives us an error here. So, uh, we see that it's basically, this error basically means, Hey, not you're doing supposed something you're not supposed to be doing. So, mm. so that's, so yeah, so you brought up a great rule. Do not, uh, do not divide by zero. It's uh, it's illegal in computing, <laughs> so it's a no no. So we did plus minus multiply divide. So let's talk about the modulus operator. So this is a interesting one that can be a little bit confusing for uh, for people. I know it was very confusing, but it's for me when I was first starting out, uh, and it's what we call modulus which is where we are uh, where we are looking for the remainder of a number after the division. So for example, let's say that we had let's do five divided by two. Oh sorry, this is division. I want modulo. Modulo is this percent sign. Mm. Um and these need to be the same type. So I think I think they might need to be both. Let's see what happens here. Once again, sometimes I forget what's actually supposed to output here. So uh, so we have five modulo two. Okay. So what that means is that if I divide two into five, how many will I have remaining? Okay, and which will be, how many would we have remaining here, Alex? One. Yeah, so we'd have one remaining. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll give us a one here. Yes, so it, give, mm. so it gives us a one. Yeah. So let's let's try another one. So let's say A, uh, let's say A is two, and let's say B is 10. So we have 10 modulo two. What would D be? In that case, Alex. 
zero because it's it's a uh, perfect division. Exactly. So so two goes evenly into ten five times. So D in this case would be zero. Okay. So zero. Hmm. So uh, some people may be asking the use for modulo. Modulo's got some great great uses. Uh, that we will probably use a little bit further down the line. So uh, one great one is if you've got some, so if you're trying to create some sort of a step sequence that goes like one, two, three, four, then back to zero, and then back to four again, and then cycles back around. So anything that you have that kind of cycles around like that uh, typically uses a modulo, uh, a modulo operation or something similar. So <laughs> that's, one of the uh, main uses for modulo, but modulo has a lot of great uses in uh, in programming, even outside of audio programming. Any other questions so far before we move on? Uh, so I assume that if we worked with uh, more complex numbers, like if we did try 2.5 into 10, then that would give you, well, in this case, it would give you a whole number because it's an int, but if you made those floats, then... Mm. That would give you that would give you a more precise answer. Yeah, so let's try it, right? So let's try float and float. And let's see what we have. So oh, this needs to be a float as well. So see sometimes it's good when it tells you that you need to have a float output. Um yeah, so as you can see, you can't, uh, I think you can only modulo with whole, with integers. I, can't, I don't think you can modulo actually with floats, hmm. uh, which is interesting. Um, yeah, there's, I think there's a, a function in the standard library that you can use to do modulo. I think it's mod F that allows you to do modulo with uh, float numbers. But otherwise, I think we're stuck with integers for modulo. Hmm. So you're catching, you're catching out my <laughs> my dark corners, my dark corners <laughs> in C plus plus. So yeah, there we go. So now we're back. We're compiling again. Okay. So great. Uh, any other any other questions or comments about that, Alex? Mm, no, not at the moment. Okay. So the next thing we'll talk about is we will talk a little bit about uh, what we call a string. So a string is a, uh, a list of characters. So like if you needed like a name, if you needed, a, a, you know, if you're programming for like a school and you needed some grades uh, that were in number, in, that were in letters like A, B, so on, that mm -hmm. you would... Um, that you would use a string for this. So uh, the thing is, is that in order to use string, I don't think string is actually an IO stream. So I think, so let's see here. Oh, it is. Oh, interesting. I thought that you have to include string in order to, uh, in order to actually declare a string. So uh, the way that you declare a string is string is actually part of the standard library. So there's a long story uh, about how, uh, about why string is not a primitive where you just can't say string like this. You have to use string from the standard library. I'm not going to get into the story because I don't know that it's that important at this, at this point in your learning. But in order to declare a string, you have to use std or standard uh, string and then what we do is we like other primitives we need to declare what we're going to call the variable so we will call it name and then what I could do is I will declare uh, what I want the string to be and notice that it's in these double quotes okay so uh, that's what a string needs to be it needs to be in these double quotes like this and so what we could do is then in my console out, I'll say name. 
and then remember what we do what we what we have here is we have uh, this name this this these characters here name are referring to this variable okay so it's looking for a variable that is called that is called name right this is what we call a string literal okay which means that we want to console out this literal bunch of characters right here mm. okay so that's so when we build here we will see that we come out with the name alex okay so that's how you declare that's how you declare a string okay any questions about that yeah so before you know, we were talking about this earlier and uh I was I wasn't sure about this myself, but what happens if you apply math operators to strings? Yeah, so that's a great question. So if we say std string, and strings are a bit tricky for these sort of for these sort of operations. Right? So if we say std string dad equals Josh, I will say names. And then I will say name plus dad. I'll need a semicolon there. And so we see that we end up with Alex Josh there. Mm. Okay. And you could like clean that up by putting a little space before that. Mm -hmm. And now we have that Alex Josh. Okay. But uh, so it allows for that, but it won't allow for subtraction. Okay, it says uh, there's no, there's no, um, there's nothing that you you can't do that, right? You can't sub subtract it. Don't think you can divide it. So when it says uh, when you do an addition there of strings, it says, hey, I know what you're doing. You want to combine both of those. But you yeah, can't okay. subtract no, an Alex from a Josh, so that doesn't really make sense. Okay. So, yep. any other questions regarding that? <clears throat> uh, no, I think I think that's pretty much it. I think we just, we, we already discussed uh, what happens if you put numbers, and if you, if you replace name with uh, two point five, then it would still print out two point five. Well, let's let's try here, right? So we see here that we just have a number. We just have a number here that's just two point five. So that'll print out, right? But what if, what if I, what if I do this? What it, what, It'll give you an error because you didn't put in quotes. Yeah, exactly. So it's literally looking for something called hello and something called world there. So we need to put that in quotes if we want that to work and so we see that we have hello world now okay yep great so now we're going to introduce another concept so we so we're going to talk about functions and functions are such a huge part of um, <laughs> of C++ and any sort of programming so if we think of variables, uh, these primitives that we've talked about so far, uh, int, float, string, uh, these are what we call variables. So we can think of them almost as like just things that we're creating, right? And then we would think of functions as something we want to do with these things, right? So we're doing something, we're doing some sort of action. It's almost like a verb, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and we see that the first, we've already been introduced to our first function, which is called int main, right? So there are, uh, there are a couple different parts to a function. So the first part here that you see is uh, called the return type. And I will come back to that in just a moment. Uh, the second part, is the function name. So in this case, our function name is called main. 
Then we have these parentheses. Uh, as I was telling you in our first lesson, in programming, we typically use different types of, of parentheses or brackets to mean mm. different things. So you have, of course, these. You have these that will mean that will go over down the road, and those mean something. And then you have these, which we call the curly brackets. So curly brackets, I guess you would call those square brackets, and then I would just call these kind of parentheses. Okay. Mm. So in functions, we have so we have these uh, parentheses. As we can see, there's nothing that's in there currently, but sometimes we want to put something in there. So we want to give some sort of, we, we need to input some data into our function and do a calculation on that data. Okay. Uh, and we will see how that, we'll see how that works in a moment. But typically we, typically those will be called either parameters. Uh, so what are the parameters of the function or what are the arguments of the function? So parameters or arguments uh, mm -hmm. for the function. Uh, then to start the function, so this is what we call the body of the function. So this is where the work actually happens. Mm -hmm. And then everything in between these two curly brackets is what is encapsulated in this function called main. Uh, now, <clears throat> finally, we have what's called the return type. Uh, the return type is that when the function is finished, uh, sometimes we might want there to be something that it gives us back. Okay, so sometimes we don't want it to give us back anything. And uh, other times we want it to do something. And then once it's done that thing, we want it to give us something back. So a good, so a good simple example of a function that we might want something to give us uh, something back is an addition function, right? Mm. Uh, where it adds up, where it adds two things that, uh, and then when it's finished adding, it gives us the result back, right? So in this, this int main function is kind of a funny one because uh, they've made it where it doesn't actually give you any sort of warning or anything because you're not actually, as you can see, there's nothing in the body and it's and it doesn't have any warning that says you you're not returning anything. Um, but normally, or sometimes in C++ programs, in your int main function, you will see at the very end you will see return zero. Okay, so return zero and zero is an int, and the return type is an int, right? So that's that's what is returned at the end of this function. Um, what this means, and this is something that I didn't really want to go too far into, but what this means is that when you have a whole bunch of functions that are in your main function, and then you get to the end, if a zero is returned in uh, at the end of your main function, then that means that all of your functions executed uh, successfully and that you've got to the end and now it's returned to zero to let you know, hey, everything happened and it's everything's all good. If something else returns like a minus one or some other number, then you know that it did not successfully, main did not successfully run all the functions that are inside of it and that something has happened along the way that's given us a different return, uh, a different number return. Okay. Mm. Does that make sense? What I've said? Yes. Okay. It'll be a lot. It'll be a lot easier if I actually show you. So let's create a function. Uh, let's say that we want to do an addition function, right? And we will say. So what's what's a good name for the function, Alex? What do you think we should call it? Um, formula. Formula. Okay. <laughs> so we could call it formula. What if we called it add? Right, because that's what it—that's what it's doing. Right, it's adding mm -hmm. two numbers together. Right. Now we want to. Now we want to give this function two numbers, and we want it to add together, and we want it to give us a result. So, what what might we want this return type to be? An int. Yeah. So we might want it to be an int. Right. Doesn't need to necessarily be, but it. 
but an int is a good one, right? So in order, and so what we're going to do is we're going to give it two numbers. So once again, we're going to open up our parentheses and we're going to have two parameters, right? So I will call this just int A and int B. And then what do I need here next to for, for my function, Alex? You need the, the body, so you need a curly bracket. Yep, so the curly brackets. So now we have some curly brackets. And <clears throat> now what I could do is I could just say return A plus B. Okay. So, so now... So now we want to use this function. Uh, so what do we need in order to, to do this, Alex? Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, you have to take the name of the function, so you'd, you'd say add. Yep. Then in the parentheses, you would actually put the, the argument. So in this case, um, you could do like, we'll just do five plus two. So yeah. you would replace the first space with five and then the second space with two. So to take those numbers and actually give you an answer. Yeah, exactly. So, so now, so now we've used our function. We've created our first function called add and we put in two numbers in here. Uh, let's say we want to print, well, let's, let's say we want to print this out, Alex, what do you, what do you think would be a good thing for us to do here? So you could you could do a couple of things. You could say um, int answer equals add five two. Yeah. You could uh, directly put that into a C out. Yeah, great. So let's try both of those. So so first first thing that we could do is we could say uh, int answer. So we've created a variable called answer that will hold that will hold uh, our the result of what finishes when we've run this function add five uh, and with our parameters five and two, right? So it will go in here. It'll say, okay, I'm looking for this function called add. It says, okay, I have a function called add. And now I'm going to add a plus B and then I'm going to return the result. And we're storing that in an int called answer. Right, so now we could do our std c out answer and then end line. And we see that we've ended up with the right answer seven. Okay, or as Alex said, we could actually just run this directly in are in our console out and we see that we actually get the correct answer here. Okay. So that's a, uh, that's a great, so that's a good function there. So we could also do another return type, right? So let's say that we want uh, a float Right, and um, let's say we call this subtract, and we say int a, int b, and then we create a function body. So one important thing to understand here is that this a and this b is not the same as this a and this b. Okay, so these these could be anything. These could literally be you know, I could say int Alex and int Josh. I could literally call them anything, but these are not these are not the same, okay? Because they're they're very specific to just this function. Okay. So hmm. uh I will show you another thing that'll that'll really blow your mind. Right. Oh, let me go back here. So I can actually go in here and I can actually say int a equals five, int b equals two, 
But I could put A and B here. And each and all of these are different. Okay, so I'm just going to mm -hmm. comment this out for a moment. Uh, so this A and B is different from this A and B. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this 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 A is just a temporary. It's just a temporary name that we're just giving for our argument or parameter. Okay. So it mm -hmm. doesn't need to be called anything. As long as we don't call it something like, uh, I guess we could call it add or I don't, uh, there are like certain keywords that we can't, we can't call it int int, right? Or int uh, mm -hmm. std string. Okay. Like can't do that. But other than that, you, you can just call it, uh, you can call it anything, right? Um, mm -hmm. so that's, so this is, this gets into what we call scope. Okay. Uh, and, and this, that's something that we'll go through a little bit further down the line. So let's, mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's create a couple more functions, right? So we got float, subtract, and what, what do you think we should put here, Alex? Uh, so you could do return a minus B. Yeah. Okay, and then let's let's do a division one, right? So we got a division. What what do you think our return type should be? Uh, probably a float. Okay, so we say it's the safest option. Yeah, so float divide it a it b, and then we would say return. A divided by B. Okay, and then we can call this int uh, multiply. And then once again, just give it two arguments. And then return A times B. By the way, this space doesn't really, this is just my particular style. I like to have. I like to have things spaced out, okay? But some people will write it like this, okay? I don't really like that, uh, but that's how some people do it. And it just means the same thing. This this space doesn't actually really mean anything, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's what we have. So we have uh, int answer, we have int... Uh, Let's just call this like uh, answer two. Yeah, uh, answer two. <laughs> yeah. So once again, you just call and and you'll know you'll know that if it's if uh, if you've put the function in the right place and if you've declared it properly. If normally you'll see it try to auto complete. So you see there that there's a I uh, typed su and then there's it automatically says, oh, do you want the subtract function that you've just created? And now I can hit tab and it will auto fill. And once again, I like to put a space between the, the function name and the parameters, if there are parameters, but you don't have to. Okay, it's just, it's just style. And so I can put A and B there. <clears throat> and then... We could say float answer three equals divide A and B, and then int multiply or answer four, sorry, equals multiply A and B. And so, yeah, we can go through here and we can say answer two and we can just do this four times, make this three and four 
and we get build succeeded and we have these answers all right mm -hmm. so so yeah so that's so so that's what uh that's what we have any any sort of questions about that so i'm assuming that you can put a, a function in a function yeah Oh yeah, yeah. You can put a function inside of a function. So one thing that I noticed. So do you notice any errors here? Do you notice any problems? Mm, well, it might get confusing. I, I don't know if that's what you mean, but yeah. Well, have a look. Have a look at. Uh, let's let's take a look at divide for example. We see we see divide there, and we have. Five divided by two. Our return type is a float, but it's given us mm. two. So what's what's happened there, Alex? Oh, because we we defined a and b as integers. Exactly. So so we've defined those as integers, right? And and also we've we've defined our arguments as integers as well, haven't we? So we mm. see that in divide we have ints as arguments and that's not going to work we need floats for these if we want to have a float in return so this this is fine because we expect an int back so we do it again and we see that we have the right result so as you can see it's so easy to get your type your your type names uh, um, actually mixed up and uh, and end up with results that are unintended so that's uh, so that's what we have there okay uh, any other questions there Alex hmm if there aren't if there aren't that's cool too. <laughs> No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, so that's so that's uh that's a really good introduction there to functions. You know, we have this we have this data that we've declared. Okay, and, and as I said to you before in the first tutorial, the earlier that you can get in get your mind around the fact that this is just data, and even the largest applications that are out there, AAA video games, biggest music applications. Mm -hmm. It's really all about data. That's what it's about. It's about taking data and just taking these basic building blocks and building them up into larger, uh, what we would call abstractions. Okay. Which is just, you know, some stuff that is like what we have here with floats and ints, but it actually involves, it's actually something much bigger and much more complicated, but it really all boils down to, this stuff, the data, and how we're taking it, moving it around, and manipulating it. So that's a good place for us to end this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we will talk more about functions. So we'll talk about things like const. Uh, we'll talk about passing by value versus passing by reference. And uh, even more fun. So that's it for now. And I will stop sharing my screen so Alex can say bye. So did you enjoy that, Alex? Yeah, that was, uh, that was quite entertaining. Great. I'm going to be testing you. I'm going to be testing you. <laughs> <in a week. laughs> so There's limitless possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Loads of possibilities. Great. So uh, thank you for everybody for watching. And we will see you next time. Yep. See you later. Later.